This is going to be a very exciting segment today, guys. Thank you for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Lewis, aka The Smoothest, a stock channel on YouTube. Today, we're going to talk about what else? The GameStop bonanza rally craziness whatever you want to call it that's going on right now for those of you who don't know the backstory let me just go through it very quickly for you guys so you can understand maybe some of you who have been hearing what's going on are a little bit confused about this backstory so i want to talk to you guys about how this came to be and how this is uh, affecting other stocks and how is is this thing gonna last is this just temporary is the stock gonna hit a thousand dollars well you're not gonna want to miss it because we're gonna talk about all of those possibilities but first let me get started with telling you a little bit of backline uh, of what's going on with GameStop so for the last uh, 12 quarters or three years for those of you who are not good with math GameStop has lost over 1.6 billion dollars okay so the company was on one of these they were like ooh, you know like a, like one of those so it was not looking very good for gamestop and it so happens that there are hedge funds out there that look for companies like these and they place bets that the companies are going to go bankrupt or the companies are going to do even worse in the future so we have two big corporates that we're going to talk about today that are behind this uh the, the two funds that have been shorting it famously shorting this stock and i'm sure there's a few others we're going to talk about how they're handling all this uh, calamity and all these losses they're having but let me continue telling you about uh the cinderella story that is gamestop so for six straight years the stock was on a decline up until 2020 when they took on um a new board member by the name of ryan Cohn uh to basically come in there and show them how it's done with the whole digital revolution you know this thing called the internet where people go and buy things and sell things well gamestop didn't know that this existed so this guy by the name of ryan cohen came on uh in late i would say late january or mid, the beginning of january sometime and then quickly the stock rose by like 94 percent from one one day to the next so i guess this created a little bit of a buzz around uh, social media platforms what the social media platform we're going to be talking about today is wall street bets that is a reddit uh, community where people go and they talk about trending stocks or things that are going on in the market it just so happens that this caught the attention of some of the investors in there and they noticed that the company had a very heavy concentration of shorts of people shorting the stock so there's a lot of them who got together well a few of them got together and this thing grew like wildfire and they decided to fight back against the short positions by starting to buy the stock heavily. And they did this and you know, you would think this would never work. You know, you've got a lot of institutional money, Wall Street money that's betting against these little guys. This is like David and Goliath, it's not gonna work. But as you can see, the stock is at what, $380 almost, I think at its peak. I think it was trading around 360, 330 today. It's all over the place. But let me continue telling you, so this all started with this Reddit community who is just plain sick and tired of Wall Street taking advantage of these brick and mortar businesses, mom and pop businesses. I guess you can call them a little bit mom and pop, even though they're, you know, publicly traded companies that are getting put out of business. But most importantly, I think that these are companies that a lot of these people in these groups consider to be a nostalgic type of company, places where they grew up going to shopping from who don't want to see uh, big institutions beating up on them even worse especially after the pandemic and taking advantage and kind of being leeches and betting against someone's failure which is kind of evil if you think about it right so they wanted to make sure that this would not continue so the main two culprits that are behind this or the ones that i'm going to talk to you about today one of them is citron research citron research is famously known for taking really bad short positions and one of the worst short positions that they took was against Tesla. A gentleman by the name of Andrew Left, he actually did a YouTube video today explaining his position. I'm gonna share that with you guys in, in just a minute, but I wanna go uh, tell you a little bit more, more about this uh, gentleman's uh, history. So he's famously held a position uh, on short position on Tesla from April 2016 to about September 2018. So I'm gonna give you the price now in which he bought it and obviously had to well, I shorted it and then had to buy it back so he took a little bit of a loss uh, after post split because you know tesla split last year five to one 
So he, he bought it around $50. I'm sorry, he shorted it around $50. And then he had to buy it back later on around $60. So he took an L. Pretty, you know, sizable loss, whatever. But he saw the writing on the wall. He gave up his position because he saw Tesla was becoming a dominant player. But the problem is, simultaneously, he had a lawsuit against Elon Musk because Elon tweeted out that he wanted to take the company private. He wanted to take it off the market and go private at $420 a share so he considered this to be market manipulation and he sued elon musk i don't know how the lawsuit turned out i'll do some more research on that but it just goes to show you that this guy does not have a good judgment of character he likes squandering money and he well actually with this situation he actually has given up because i guess he either does not want to repeat history or he probably doesn't have the money to cover it now i want to show you guys what he recently said in his youtube video let's let's play it for you guys to hear so first, let's answer this question. I'm just fine. Citron Capital is just fine. I don't, I don't believe that. I, I think he's pretty butthurt, but that's just my opinion. Cover the majority of the short in the 90s, at a loss 100%, have a small imaginable position, and I'll let it go. For those who don't have a short, for those with a short memory, you might remember Tilray a few years ago. I learned from Tilray. It was a killer. I saw where it went, went all the way in the mid 200s. And it settled all the way back down. I think now it's 17 or 19, but it went all the way to $6. I expect the same thing from GameStop, but I have respect for the market. Second, this is very important. I also have respect for the people on the Wall Street bets and on Reddit message boards. Before there was Reddit, before there was memes, before there was Instagram, and yes, before there was even Facebook, there was Citron Research. We were the voice of the individual investor against the institution. I took the lawsuits. I went to court. I talked to questions to lay the foundation. So obviously I support any opposing opinions. But what I never did was I never got personal, I never got nasty, and I never threatened a corporate executive, their family, or any shareholders. It was always business. And the last piece of advice, and I was questioning whether to say this or not, but I have to, because me being an individual investor, a successful one for over 25 years, have to give this piece of advice to the Reddit people who are watching. When you make your profits, make sure you put some away for the IRS. That money is not all your money, but at the end of the year, you do owe tax money. Okay, so apparently it, what he's saying here is that he's probably been disrespected or threatened by some of the people uh, on these uh, forums, which is obviously that is not acceptable. That's nothing that anyone should condone by any means whatsoever. But what I am getting from this is that he is willfully putting out this video that you can see he is uh, scripted because he keeps looking at his notes where he says he respects what Wall Street Bets is doing, uh, the forum that they're using to come uh, back and fight against uh, funds like these. And he respects all this because at one point he was the underdog too. That could be rightfully so. I still personally think and, and I know that Wall Street Bets, the, the forum we just talked about, is not going to give up these people are relentless i and i think he saw that he saw that and he threw in the towel before it was too late so i commend him for that that is definitely uh not easy to do especially in on wall street these guys have very big egos uh speaking of which there is another fund that i want to mention to you which is melvin capital melvin capital uh there's a manager a fund manager there by the name of gabe plotkin and uh, he's uh, denied rumors that his fund is now positioned to fail uh, because he's been questioned on this since they've been having a lot of bad calls. Let me tell you about one of the worst calls that they have. And, and this is why they always say you never bet against Elon. He has also shorted Tesla. I don't know how many of these people. No wonder Elon came out with these short shorts. I, I mean, I, I, I don't see it, but people are, are, are they're dumb enough to try. Uh, he shorted Tesla from 2016, and just like uh, Mr. Andrew left here, he shorted from 2016 to 2020. So he purchased at around post-split price, uh, 50 bucks. I keep saying purchase, but he he took a uh, short position at, at 50 bucks. So he shorted at 50 bucks, and then he had to give up his position in 2020. So he had to buy shares back, guys, at around 600 to 700 dollars. I mean, we're not too sure exactly. And that could be one of the main reasons why he's being asked if his fund is positioned to fail. I, I wouldn't blame him if he if he did shut down the doors because at this point he's probably funding it with his own money. So what are analysts now saying about this whole GameStop craziness? Do they have they changed their tune about 
uh, GameStop having a future. Maybe they're gonna convert to these online sales and they're gonna do much better. Well, let me tell you what Bank of America, who everyone out there holds at the pinnacle of certainty when it comes to analysts. No, I'm just kidding, guys, they're the worst. I, can't, I, would never, I would never listen to anything Bank of America says, but this is funny, I just wanted to share this with you. B of A Global Research has raised their price target on GameStop from $1.6, $1.60, to about $10. The stock at this time is currently trading at $362. So there is a major disconnect here, guys. There's a humongous disconnect. Now, is GameStop's financials, are the fundamentals, are they strong enough to support a $360 stock price? Well, probably not. And I don't know how long that price could be sustained even when it comes to uh, the people who ran it up that high. Because remember, those people who are betting, they're not funds they have endless amounts of cash as a matter of fact i want to share this with you guys i went on to their forum and i see people in here who are saying uh, now i can write my mom a check and put my sister through lyme's treatment uh, i'm pretty sure you know this is not something they're making up this has been a very rough year but i'm so thankful for every single one of you so this person right here who just commented on this two hours ago uh, is basically saying that, look, you guys have made me a boatload of money. Now I'm going to take some of this money off the table and go do some good with it. And I guarantee you that a lot of people are going to do that. But I don't think there's that many people out there who are brave enough, and I'm sure there will be some, to take a new short position. As a matter of fact, I might just try that, guys. I might make a video on that. I might just try it. I'm not going to spend a lot of money on it. But I might just try to short the stock. Not that I want game stock to go down or, or, or be out of, out of business. But GameStop literally has no business being traded at $360. And the people on the forum here, they're talking about having the stock go up to $1,000 a piece. That could happen, very unlikely, because a lot of people are taking profits right now at the 300 mark. Uh, we'll see where it is at the end of this video or at the end of this day. I will upload it here on the screen. I'll tell you guys, because right now it's at 360. By the end of this video, who knows? Or by the time the video is edited, it might be even less. Uh, another analyst who you all know and love, Jim Cramer, who is sometimes on the money and sometimes completely wrong, as he's been wrong in the past about Tesla, but now he's converted, so he's cool now. Cramer has uh, stated recently on, on Squawk on the Street, which is uh, the place where everyone goes for their financial information, besides my channel. He said, I never seen guns like this. They can break shorts. So even Kramer is giving them the recognition and the props that they deserve, right? But not everyone is so positive about what these people are doing on these forums. Uh, so right now we have a problem. The party might be coming to an end because the SEC is now getting involved. I mean, listen, the SEC gets involved in everything because they're a huge money grab from these institutions, companies, and, and, and Elon will tell you all about it. They're a huge money grab. So what they're trying to do right now is uh, investigate. What they will do is investigate to see if there's any market manipul manipulation. And the reason why is because, um, well, I'll play something for you. I'll show you guys exactly what I found. Uh, the reason why this is uh, possible is, number one, because these funds, they might be kind of nudging the SEC saying, come on, guys, do something about this. You got to halt trading on this GameStop thing because this is just nonsense. This is crazy. But I will tell you this, if they stop trading on GameStop stock, that's fun to say, if they stop the trading on it, it's going to set a very dangerous precedent. And the reason why is because what these people are doing on these Reddit forums, on Instagram, anywhere, they're just practicing free speech. Now, if we had, let's say, Elon, which he's done in the past, and I'll tell you what, Elon's gotten in trouble in the past. If you have like a CEO going on a forum and saying, hey guys, let's run this stock up to $1,000. Meanwhile, the CEO has a conflict of interest there by doing that. And maybe he just purchased, who knows, 100,000 more shares. That is market manipulation. That is also a conflict of interest. That's, that's illegal all the way. But what these people are doing is they're just basically educating each other and saying we're sick and tired of Wall Street and these funds taking advantage of little businesses. Let's step in and do the right thing. Let's squeeze these shorts out of their position. Now, would you consider that being market manipulation? Uh, leave it uh, in the comments down below, guys, because I don't think it is. I personally don't think it is. But this gentleman that I saw here, 
has something different to say. And uh, who he is is the former SEC counsel. So he is the attorney for the SEC. It, it doesn't get more by the book and strict and stringent than this guy right here. He, he, is, he addressed the GameStop rally here on CNBC. So let's check out what he had to say. Just give me your take on what you're at least aware of right now and whether there is a place for the regulators to potentially step in. Oh, good morning and thanks for having me. Uh, I'm sure that the regulators have already stepped into this situation. Th these are the kinds of places where the SEC, FINRA, and the exchanges all come together very quickly to watch this. And they watch it very carefully because there is so much speculation. There's so much up and down in the pricing that there's huge potential for people to get hurt. So you can be assured that they're doing that as we speak. Um, Tom, how do they how do they approach sort of the um, open nature of this? This is not people leveraging their influence or their connections. Uh, it's simply leveraging social media. Do you think there are existing laws in place that will help regulators put a ring fence around these dislocations? Absolutely. They, they have put they put a ring around this kind of behavior for a long time. This is not the first time you've seen a speculative bubble. This is just the latest time that you've seen this. You've got a huge short interest here. You've got what's, what's sort of unusual here is you seem to have a lot of popular interest from people who are interested in game stock, but there are guardrails that the regulators have put in place. There's the fraud statutes. If you don't, if you're not telling the truth, if you if you're doing something deceptive, if you're doing something that's manipulative, they'll step in. There are other guardrails that stop the trading so that they, so that everything keeps up to date, so everybody's trades are getting registered. But what they don't do is they don't stop the speculation. That's been a subject of, of conversation in the, in the securities markets, the fraud market, uh, the, um, the futures markets for years. But speculators give liquidity to these markets when it gets out of control like this. It can be very disruptive and a lot of people can get, get hurt. A lot of hedge funds have been bailing out of this, out of their positions here. A lot of them are going to have problems covering their short positions and that will cause the regulators some heartburn. But there's a very clear set of regulations here, a very clear set of guardrails that the regulators are watching. And be assured, they're looking at those guardrails. They're also looking at social media to try to tie that up to the trades. And the SEC in particular is very good at doing that. Yeah, Tom, I mean, just to dig into that a little bit more, though, in terms of those guardrails, I mean, I, I realize, we, you know, you could talk about what constitutes market manipulation or, or collusion. But what we're essentially talking about when we look at Reddit right now, at least uh, from first glance, is what one uh, trader sort of put it to me is um, crowdsourced activist investing right now. I mean, if it's just people talking and trading and talking about their trades on social media, how is that really that different than, say, one of these hedge fund investors coming on and talking their book on CNBC? How do you build that case when so many people are involved in that conversation and those threads? You have to do this very carefully. And as I said, the SEC has, has been doing this for years. They're very good at doing this. And they can go trade by trade by trade. They take those trades. They match them up to what they're seeing on social media. They match them up to what you're saying. And they make sure that you're staying within the guardrails of what you're, what you're doing. So if you're talking about your trades, it better, it better be that you're telling the true story. It better, it better be that you're telling the whole story. If you're putting stuff out there just to move the price, if they came on your show, for example, just to hype the price, then they're going to they're gonna be able to figure that out. You'll see it from things like they put out a big position, big short position, big long position just before they got on your show. Then they come in on here and talk it up, and then it moves and you can bet that they're going to be hauled in with a subpoena by the SEC. Absolutely. I agree with him. That would be manipulation, but I don't constitute this as being manipulation. At least that's my understanding. That is my take, and that's the way I see it, but it's just my opinion at the end of the day. But they showed a lot of pictures of Elon Musk on the screen, which is hilarious, but Elon does have a little bit of a part to play in what's going on right now because Elon, uh, recently he just tweeted out Game Stonk on his Twitter, which a lot of people know that Elon can move markets by just putting in a word or two into his tweets and the stocks go crazy. So he's really not that unfamiliar with SEC violations or penalties and things like that because uh, Elon 
like I mentioned earlier, had tweeted at one point that he was thinking of taking his company public, Tesla, I mean, pu uh, public private uh, at 420. It's just, a, you know, guys, you know him. He's just joking around. This guy is always coming up with some absurd things and, and using innuendos and wherever he can. Uh, obviously, that got him in trouble because he had to pay a $10 million fine when that happened or well, shortly after. And uh, he also has been known for tweeting things such as, I think the Tesla stock is too high and then the stock drops. <laughs> He's nuts. He's guys, this guy's crazy. And uh, obviously recently he tweeted out that he loved his new knit hat that he bought for his dog on Etsy and it sent the stock up about 8%. Now, the stuff like this guys, you can't make this up. I mean, this is just, it, he's, he's a market mover. What are you going to do? Right. But getting back to this, this could mean a very, very dangerous times for not only GameStop and many other companies, but also freedom of speech, guys. I think this is going to be a big violation of that. But uh, just like these social activists or investor activists, however the lady detailed them, just like they're standing up for uh, the little guys on, you know, Main Street or whatever the case may be, you better believe that these people will also stand up for freedom of speech. So I don't think this is going to get too, too far. I do think there'll be some added regulations to maybe what can be said on social media channels, on YouTube, on Instagram and those things. But I don't know whose job is going to be to monitor that. I don't know if it's going to be the SEC is going to put a special task force or they're going to leave it on to the leave it to the platforms to monitor what's being said. I, I don't know. I, I'd like to see where this thing ends. Uh, but uh, moving on, I'd like to talk to you about the other companies that are getting the spillover effect from GameStop's crazy rally that we're having right now. Right. What do you call that? Just enormous boom or, or going to the moon these these guys that's crazy right so we've also got amc amc theaters as you know i covered them in one of my previous videos i will leave it up here if you guys haven't got a chance to see that i talked about how they just took on almost a billion dollars in debt to stay afloat so they wouldn't have to go bankrupt but as of today the hashtag save amc is trending on twitter which is crazy because the trend on Twitter guys it takes a lot of momentum so uh, because of this if the stock is booming as well the stock is up tremendously and uh, but the, at the end of the day guys the fundamentals really haven't changed for the company uh, human nature is is changed for good I believe the way that we've been kind of incubated now in our homes uh, renting movies on streaming services or just you know buying the movies on streaming services I don't know what it's considered now but I doubt that we're ever gonna get the same capacity of people that used to go to movie theaters as we did in the past. So even if they barely get by, let's just say that AMC makes it through 2021 and lives to fight another year, their revenues are never gonna be the same again unless they do something that is very, very innovative, something that is completely disruptive. Maybe if they do some virtual reality type of thing or maybe if they maybe somehow team up with streaming services i mean amc you've really got to revolutionize your business from just brick and mortar you got to start thinking about other things maybe you can create content maybe you can do a streaming service like i mentioned earlier something or maybe or maybe turn some of these brick and mortar buildings that you have into different uses i don't know what you can do there but just gotta think outside the box maybe make it a more of a destination type of thing or maybe you could team up with planet 13 and you guys can do some really really special movies there i mean that's all that would be nice <laughs> for people who are into that stuff uh next i want to talk to you about uh bed bath and beyond uh you guys know how excited i get to go to bed bath and <laughs> no <laughs> but they're up 64 percent i'm sorry i apologize 64 percent of their float shares right now are being caught in short positions so uh they're also getting a huge rally because people are going after these uh short sellers big time and these activists are going after those uh the, these hedge funds to squeeze them out of the positions because uh, Bed Bath & Beyond hasn't really been doing that great either, but they're up 70% this year in 2021. And it's because of the angry mob of housewives on Pinterest. So I, in my mind, and I'm envisioning that it's probably not Wall Street bets, but it's probably like the soccer moms of Pinterest that are, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know who it is, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a company that people know is suffering because of the pandemic and they're probably plowing in. Now, I want to talk to you about some other honorable mentions that are being circulated through the uh, Wall Street Bets platform or the Wall Street Bets uh, Reddit. I want to talk to you about some of the other companies that they have their eye on. Obviously, none of these have had the same kind of a boom as the uh, GameStop has had, but BlackBerry is one of them, another nostalgic brand. Uh, National Beverage, I'm not too uh, familiar with uh, 
which beverages they have. Uh, another company by the name of Ma Masirich, uh, Mace Rich, I think that's the Mace Rich is the name of the company. Tanger Factory Outlets, obviously you guys know you, they have those outlets all over the place. Then you've got Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll! Tootsie Roll is super iconic, guys. I wouldn't, I don't know what I would do if, if Tootsie Rolls uh, are no longer in existence. My daughters love Tootsie Rolls too, so we got it. We got to save the Tootsie Rolls. I think Tootsie Roll could go crazy viral. Uh, maybe we want to take a look at that because I don't think that's going anywhere. Children's Place and iRobot. These are some other ones they're talking about. But there's also a huge impact, not right now because it's completely bombing right now, but the cryptocurrency uh, market could also be greatly affected by the uh stuff that's going on right now because as you know the reason why they're going after these short sellers is because they're tired of market manipulation they're tired of people coming in there and forcing businesses to shut down well uh cryptocurrency and bitcoin and ethereum and all these other uh types of cryptos they have a lot of manipulation from bigger whales or hedge funds as well and you're going to see more and more of this in the future so i can see this trickling over this effect trickling over into the crypto market uh, but the other thing that does worry me about this is that uh, it could also backfire on us if the sec starts to regulate what can be said what can be done you know those things may have a deep impact on a lot of the way thing a lot a lot of the way that people spread information about financial instruments and investing so hopefully it never comes to that now for me i just wish they would have been around a little bit earlier so they could have saved toys r us because as a kid i remember loving to go to toys r us just so i can play i can play the nintendo games there or just windows shop the nintendo games Oh, man, I man, I love Toys R Us. I wish they were still around. I wish they would have saved that brand. Maybe it is. Is it still around? Is it is it like an internet internet brand now? I, I'd love to see if we can somehow bring that thing back. Can we bring back? Can we bring? Can we bring back brands? That's like really fun to say. But I, I'm serious about this, guys. If there's a way to bring back Toys R Us, I would love that. The other thing is that, as you know, earnings season is upon us, and today is a humongous day. So. Apple is expected to have today their earnings released, which are expected to be at about $1.41 earnings per share. Uh, so that is pretty damn good. Uh, but if uh, we know Apple, in which I'm expecting, they're gonna blow this out. They're gonna have a better earnings per share than $1.41, uh, which means in my opinion that this stock is probably gonna go somewhere to about $175 to $225 in the near future, guys. Uh, this is a good one. If you haven't yet increased your size or purchased any Apple shares at all, Go ahead and do so. If you don't have an app to, to buy your, your shares, you don't even know how to get started, well, check out my free uh, link down below in the description for Weeble where you can get four free stocks when you do that. And the other one is Tesla, guys. Tesla is releasing their earnings today. I personally think that they will do better as well. But Tesla, over uh, the course of the last, I think it's been about five quarters now that they've been profitable, every single time, their stock actually takes a dip after reporting their earnings so it might be an opportunity for you guys to buy right after the earnings get released today unless elon comes out with some crazy news uh during his uh, uh an earnings call or investors call i think he might come out with something out of left field and if he does it could send the stock going to the moon guys i'm ready for that but i'd rather have it come down for a little while so we can get in at a decent price so come on elon just give me like a little Give me like a little break there so we can do that. Uh, speaking of electric vehicles, I also want to let you guys know that I am working on a video uh, comparing CCIV, which as you know, is going to be merging with Lucid, uh, comparing the risk you're taking with a possible profit, but also giving you guys an idea to maybe invest into another speculative play without so much downside, which is Workhorse that I've been invested in since uh, middle of last year, guys, and it's finally starting to pump because Joe Biden came out the other day and said, we are going to electrify, electrify our fleet. And so I'm, I'm stoked because if they do, that means that Workhorse is gonna get a nice chunk of that, <laughs> of all of that money that's gonna be floating around. So thank you for that, Joe. We, the stock really needed it. And the other thing I wanna let you guys know of is that if you're enjoying these videos and you wanna take your investing to the next level, I invite you to join our investors group We've been meeting now for about two weeks and we have investors already. Guys are up over 20% on, on their money. So this is a really good sign. Plus not only that guys, it's less than a dollar a day. So if you can't afford that, then you shouldn't be buying that Starbucks coffee or whatever else that you're unnecessarily spending your money on because this is the greatest investment you could do guys is investing in yourself. One of the best investments that we are talking about in our group is cryptocurrency. But unfortunately right now, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all of them, they're down because they're being highly 
easily manipulated. So that's bad for cryptos, but it's great for you because it gives you the opportunity to get in there and buy at a very good price. And if you don't know the first thing about crypto or you want to learn more about crypto or you just want to hear what I have to say about it, well, click the video on the screen right now and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds. But before you go, don't forget to smash the like button, guys, subscribe and share this with a friend. Thank you guys for watching. I love you and I'll see you next time.